Vegas vibe behind the scenes with Dash Berlin. Uh, the thing is, when it comes to Vegas, the crowd always changes, so it's never the same. There's always new people coming to the clubs here, and that's amazing. So for me as a DJ, that's a super challenge in, to get the party going every time and time and time again. Uh, and again, I really get moved because when everything falls into place, it seems like you get kind of a shock. The dance genre, it's one of the, uh, what I like to call the pillars, and that's pretty cool because we're around pillars here. Uh, it's one of the pillars um, of, of, of dance music as we know it. We are the music makers. And we are the dreamers of dreams. When you're truly happy with what you're, do, with what you're doing, I think uh, that really relates also to a part uh, of awareness of where you are in life. Uh, I used to be a drummer. Uh, I got this really cool drum kit for my eighth birthday from my dad. He used to be a drummer in the jazz band and that's where I got my 4x4 beat from, kind of. What I'm doing now, and I, sometimes I have to pinch myself. I could not really foresee this actually happening, like you just said. I mean, if you told me like five, six years ago to be in the DJ Mag for three years straight in the top 10, I'd say, you're crazy. So we're doing this together, and that's where we are actually came from. It, like the awareness that we have to accomplish something together. I have a soccer background, so I used to play soccer a lot. I used to be in youth divisions of professional teams in the Netherlands, and I had the, uh, the pleasure of uh, sharing the field with eventually uh, 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 guys that even went to the national Dutch team. And that's, that's great to see that happening. I really enjoy what I do and um, I, I just want to give it all I can every, every single show. And um, I'm there for the fans 100%, 100% and, and before the show, at the show, after the show. Hi, I'm Dash Berlin and you're watching Vegas Vibe. Dash Berlin is the 10th most popular DJ in the world. From working in a record store as a teen who began his love for EDM in high school to world-renowned DJ. Get to know Dash Berlin, a marquee day and nightclub resident. when it comes to Vegas the crowd always changes so it's never the same there's always new people coming to the clubs here and that's amazing so for me as a DJ that's a super challenge in to get the party going every time and time and time again uh, and again and obviously there's a lot of my fans coming uh, from LA and all around and those are the familiar faces the true dashers who bring that really special party atmosphere to the to the party itself as well. I think that I'm in a very privileged position to be one of the residents of Marquis Vegas. I think I'm really privileged uh, in traveling all over the world, meeting so many new faces, getting to know a lot of cultures, but also seeing familiar faces as well. I think when it comes to DJing, you should really um, be able to read the crowd in what they want. Obviously, when I, when I DJ, uh, I play a lot of my own productions, remixes, dash-ups, that's the way I like to call my mash-ups. Um, but still be able to surprise here and there. 
But nowadays, it's also really important to produce music. So in that whole process, you should also be uh, on the lookout of new plugins, new ways of producing music, new sounds, so on, so on. Uh, so actually, it's kind of a, a whole uh, artist thing, which uh, combines DJing and, 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 and producing at the same time. What I try to do as a producer as well is to translate what people are feeling when they are on the dance floor. So in a peculiar way they're listening to their own emotions and um, what I do when I work on the music with the guys in the studio is, is when I DJ I try to get that feeling in the studio and try to uh, translate that into music. And Sometimes you can see it in, 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 in videos or wherever it is. It, it can be on dashbrilliantworld.com, it can be on my Instagram account or on Twitter or on one of my videos. Is that I really get moved because when everything falls into place, it seems like you get kind of a shock. And that shock translates into an emotion that hits me as well or to goosebumps, for instance, or a lot of energy, a lot of adrenaline that keeps me going for like three hours straight. Trans music is such a huge um, uh, music style, a, a dance genre. It's one of the, uh, what I like to call the pillars, and that's pretty cool because we're around pillars here. Uh, it's one of the pillars um, of, of, of dance music as we know it. You have house, you have techno, you have trance. And I see uh, trans music as a whole um, movement of all subgenres being together as one. So I don't see the dividing in the in, in the in the music style. I see the whole collection and that's a lot of melodies, a lot of vocals and a BP BPM range which can go from 124 BPMs until even 140 which is super fast and maybe even over that. And that whole collection and that whole um, feeling which comes to that music, that is what I call trance. When you're truly happy with what you're, do, with what you're doing, I think uh, that really relates also to a part uh, of awareness of where you are in life and, and, and how do you react to what you are experiencing in life. I, I come from a background that I used to sell records, so I was already in kind of a hot zone, so to speak. But I was looking up to a lot of people uh, that I served uh, as, a, as, a, as a, a record store clerk assistant, so to speak. And those were big names at that time who came into the shop and I was advising them with all the, the records they, they, they wanted to have. Because we got all stuff in. I was just working in the supermarket, just you know, doing the shelves and stuff like that. And already the, the leap from a supermarket to a record store to me was like, oh, really cool. Because yeah, I was buying records at that record store at the time. And uh, I was buying so much records that eventually one of the guys who had my address and, and my phone number, he was like, okay, may, maybe it's a cool job for you to work here. And so it went, in steps and I kind of rolled into something which eventually 
became Dash Berlin. I, I, I didn't see that coming. Uh, my musical background is, uh, I used to drum. Uh, I used to be a drummer. Uh, I got this really cool drum kit for my eighth birthday from my dad. He used to be a drummer in a jazz band. and That's where I got my 4x4 four four beat from, kinda. And uh, after a while, my sister just started handing me over these cassette tapes with uh, DJ mixes on them. And I started listening to those cassette tapes. And uh, with collecting my first, rec uh, first records, I tried to mix along with the cassette tapes. And that, that's actually the part where the electronic music kicked in. to stay in shape for me it's it's well the shows itself <laughs> actually are kind of a workout but besides that uh, I like to do Bikram yoga I, been, uh, I started doing that about two years ago and and before that I used to do a lot of cardio fitness running uh, I still do that every once in a while I can find some time but uh, I really enjoy Bikram yoga to be honest um, it's it's kind of a long run because uh, when you do uh, a yoga session the Bikram yoga session, they're, they're like one and a half hour and it's a combination of energy, it's a combination of um, tranquility, uh, meditation, stretching, um, fitness basically and that's all combined together and that, that really uh, hits the spot for me. When I lost my job, uh, I started with Dash Berlin. Not a lot of people know that, that uh, actually that turning point uh, was, was really the start of Dash Berlin until the sky falls down, that kind of skyrocketed everything. So um, that, that was something I, I didn't foresee. So at one time, uh, you see losing your job, losing a part of what you've been doing with a lot of love. I was selling records in a record store and from that, actually, kind of, I kind of rolled into what I'm doing now, and I sometimes I have to pinch myself. I could not really foresee this actually happening, like you just said. I mean, if you told me like five, six years ago to be in the DJ Mag for three years straight in the top ten, I would say you're crazy. And that is really a big, big turning point for me. So I, 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 I live with that almost every day. That I think, okay. I really have to cherish this. Armin is definitely uh, of, of great importance to my career. Armin is one of the guys who kind of got behind Tilt the Sky Falls Down, my first production in the beginning. Uh, also with this uh, very influential uh, radio show, State of Trance. And after supporting Tilt the Sky Falls Down all over the world, people started asking questions about who or what is Dash Berlin. And that kind of helped the ball rolling into standing here right now and so I definitely uh, owe him a, a, a big deal of thanks to that.
R is a is kind of a modular concept in which a lot of people can refer to we are because we are helping each other to create something we can create music we can create a party um, and the funny thing is me and my manager we, we, we talk about that quite a lot in in it goes from A to Z really and and because you have to think of it where would I be if we don't have somebody to pick us up from the airport to eventually bring us to the party. It's all, we're doing this together and that's where we are actually came from. Like the awareness that we have to accomplish something together and, and the world as it is, is quite individual as it is. And, and I see it more as a togetherness also with, with the true fans, the dashers. Uh, we can all relate to who we are. And, I'm super happy with this. Eventually, the, the, the whole process of the album kind of uh, um, went quite quickly. I didn't see that coming. I think the best way to describe it is that it kind of, maybe it's kind of weird, but for me, delivering a baby. Because you have been working on that and just caring about that for such a long time. Eventually, when it's there, it's just like super great pleasure. It's, it's not anything less to describe it like that. And, um, obviously, when, when, when people are focusing on, on different tracks which are on the album, um, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to, to their reactions. Is it something they, they, they've seen coming? Because obviously with Dash Berlin we want to go forward as well. So that's why we decided we want to make it trans, but like a 2.0 version of trans in that way we see it. Hold me tonight What happened to me my head in the clouds Falling so deep You came and saw No shoes on my feet Cold and afraid It feels like I could break I have a soccer background, so I used to play soccer a lot. I used to be in youth divisions of professional teams in the Netherlands, and I had the, uh, the pleasure of uh, sharing the field with eventually uh, 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 guys that even went to the national Dutch team. And that's, that's great to see that happening. And in fact, the cool thing is, is when you compare the, the dance music industry next to soccer, professional soccer though, you can see a lot of overlap in, 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 in uh, determination to get somewhere, in uh, just training for something you want to reach. Now, well, for me, it's not necessarily training, but it's more like a learning process or uh, getting myself uh, around a new program or new sounds or new plugins or stuff like that in order to create something. <laughs> Fortunately, my father is not with me anymore. He, he passed away when I was uh, when I was 15, and uh, I think of him a lot. And I still wear this ring as a replica of a ring he used to wear, which goes on from father to son. My mom, she supports me all the way, and and kind of referring back to the story that I used to play soccer. My mom and my my dad, they always used to be there for me uh, when I need to go to practice. They made it happen. They they were there and they brought me to the practices and stuff like that. They were uh, standing next to the line with games and stuff. So when I put that next to DJing uh, right now and, and, and making music is that 
I feel that same vibe and I feel the same support I had from the first day. I really enjoy what I do and um, I, I just want to give it all I can every every single show and um, I'm there for the fans 100% 100% and, and before the show, at the show, after the show and, and I think um, when you really like and enjoy what you do you don't feel it as kind of a hard labor so for me it's really a labor of love and it just it just goes and I feel great doing it. Do I see myself doing this forever? Oh, as long as it goes, really. I mean, um, all the big guys um, who started, they are still going at it every, every weekend, maybe even more. The big, big names out of the industry who started this. And so, in a way, they have proven that there is no, not a shelf life yet to a DJ or an artist at this point. So, that's a really tough question to answer because there is not a, 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 an age at this point from which you have to say, okay, I have to retire because my body cannot take it anymore. There is not a DJ who has stopped since the beginning as far as I know. I think um, for EDM, both underground and mainstream, they need each other. It's almost like life. You need darkness, you need light, uh, you need positivity, you need negativity in order to balance, uh, to balance things out. You have to see it like without the underground you wouldn't have a mainstream and vice versa. So that's the way I see it. And the cool thing of the underground actually is that there's a lot of talent developing in the underground which I'm trying to keep an eye on myself as well. Um, and, and eventually you see people growing from some points in to become a mainstream DJ, artist, producer, whatever. And that's a cool way to see because you see a, a kind of a process of the importance of having an underground as well. That's a good reference giving the EDC here in Vegas as a World Cup, actually a final as well, because it was a final, the Insomniac crew who puts those shows together, I mean, it's not a carnival not for nothing. It's, it is a carnival. You, you have all the, the attractions, you have all um, the big rides, they are there, and, and, and people are using them while enjoying dance music. I mean, that's a, it's a win-win, their reaction to that, and the way they are experiencing music, and the way that comes back to me, that's something I, 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 I really fuel myself with uh, to, to, to make new music. Put your hands together for Dash Berlin. That is an experience which is kind of hard to put in words actually. I mean it's super overwhelming to present the final uh, moment of EDC. That's, that's just super special and I think that's a great honor too. And the whole year round, and it's starting again already, I get feedback from people all over the world about that EDC sets. And when I get that feedback, I'm like, yeah, this is really cool.